Fire Lord Azula? It does seem appropriate. I agree, Azula. I do. Fire Lord Ozai is an imposing figure throughout all of Avatar The Last Airbender. For most of the show's runtime, he's seen mostly in flashbacks, basically always in shadow and we don't see his face. He's the personification of the evil the Fire Nation has done all over the world of Avatar, and the show presents him as the ultimate enemy to defeat. But I don't think this was the best choice honestly. As imposing as he is, Ozai is a one-dimensional antagonist. He's less interesting than many other Fire Nation characters, including antagonists like his own son Zuko and his daughter Azula and even Zhao. So for me, the final battle between Aang and Ozai held little weight, especially when compared to the one between Zuko and Azula. Basically, I think the final battle should have been between Azula and Aang. So in this video, I will outline how I would rewrite the ending of Avatar The Last Airbender if I had gotten this great opportunity. The first change I would make would actually be that the exchange between Azula and Ozai when he reveals his plan to have her stay in the Fire Nation would happen earlier. Making it a last minute reveal feels out of place for Ozai. He obviously had been planning it for some time since he'd already had his Phoenix King regalia made. The reveal as it is in the show seems like it only exists for dramatic effect. So instead of that, I will have him reveal his plans earlier. Maybe the night before, during a war meeting. Just like in the show, Azula talks back, obviously upset. You... you can't treat me like this! You can't treat me like Zuko! It was my idea to burn everything to the ground! I deserve to be by your side! However, since she speaks out of turn during a war meeting, she dishonors her father, much like her older brother did so many years before. Her father snaps at her. Azula! The whole room is silent. I expected better from you, Azula. Ozai says, it seems you must be taught a lesson in respect as well as your failure for brother. He gets to his feet. Prepare yourself, Agni Kai. He walks out of the room. No one dares look at Azula. Azula is terrified. She knows she doesn't stand a chance against him. But to turn down the challenge would be even more dishonor on the Fire Lord. As they move to the battleground, Azula takes deep breath after deep breath. She had always taken pride in being the favorite child of the Fire Lord, the one who always did exactly what was needed to stay in his good graces. The last thing she had ever wanted was to be treated like Zuko. She is afraid, but she intends to give the fight her all. She has no other choice. After all, Zuko bears the consequence of refusing to fight Ozai right on his face. As the Agnika is about to begin, Ozai says, it's a shame. I was planning to leave you here to rule the Fire Nation in my stead as I went off to bring the world under our banner. Azula's lips tremble, but she steals herself and prepares for the fight of her life. To everyone's surprise, Azula bests her father in the Acne Kai. Somehow, as Azula had trained over the years, she had quietly become a more skilled fighter and firebender than her father, without even her knowing. She has him on the ropes throughout the entire fight, laughing and even taunting him. Surrender father, she says finally. Name me Fire Lord and I will allow you to witness our goals become reality, the world under my rule. Ozai's pride doesn't let him though. He glares up at her from the floor, nursing his wounds. Never. He growls. Then, Azula answers with a smirk. Let's end this Agni Kai with honor. This Azula isn't as far gone as the one from the show. She's visibly rattled by the betrayal of her friends, but she needs to still be an imposing threat or it will mean little to have her defeated in the end. Like her father before her, 
Azula is coronated Fire Lord as the previous Fire Lord's remains are burned in her presence. She then returns to her bedroom for the night, for the last time. The next time she returns to the palace after the attack on the Earth Kingdom, her things will have already been moved to the Fire Lord's bedroom. Azula heads straight for her dresser, where she removes an old portrait of her mother that she had hid beneath her clothes. As she looks at the picture, a single tear escapes. See, mother, she says, you were wrong. You were always talking about love and announcing the truth about how to truly gain power in this world. You were naive and you taught Zuko to be naive. I don't need Mei or Tai Lei. I don't even need you. I'm the most powerful person in the entire world now and it will tremble before me or I will burn it to the ground. She is about to toss the portrait across the room but she catches herself. Instead, she wipes her tears and puts it back in the drawer. This scene replaces the one in which Azula hallucinates her mother. It shows her struggle between the opposing teachings of her mother and father. Alone in her room, she shows yet another sign of what she would call weakness, doubt. But her path is still set. She knows what she must do. Crucially, Azula is named Fire Lord so soon before the attack on the Earth Kingdom that news of it doesn't get a chance to get to Team Avatar. They still expect Ang to fight Ozai, but they don't know that he's already gone. The story continues pretty much the same from that point. Ang gets called by the Lion Turtle and his friends go looking for him until they find the White Lotus. Zuko and Katara head towards Azula and the others head towards the Fire Nation airships. The difference is that Zuko and Katara find Azula en route to the airship fleets instead of at the Fire Nation capital. Zuko does not see the same loosened grip that he does in the show. This Azula seemingly has everything together. So the two team up against her under the light of Sozin's comet. Unfortunately, they don't stand a chance. At this point, I should point out another difference between the show and my rewrite. Not only is Sozin's Comet in the sky, but a full moon too. I feel like bloodbending should have shown up in the final episodes, and this is how I would put it in. Azula hurts Zuko and is ready to put an end to him, but Katara stops her with bloodbending. Tears are forming in Katara's eyes. She's conflicted. She had promised herself never to bloodbend again but it was the only way to save Zuko's life. Azula is visibly forlorn. She's whimpering, unable to resist Katara's grip. Was her mother right all along? Katara saved Zuko out of love, kindness, and that was powerful enough to stop Azula in her tracks. Unfortunately for Team Avatar and fortunately for Azula, the moon sets. The full moon sets around sunrise which means that not only are firebenders now powered by the comet but also by the sun. Azula cackles, free from Katara's bloodbending grip. Katara and Zuko have no choice but to escape. They have no way of beating her now. Riding on Appa, Katara heals Zuko, who sits up weakly. What do we do now? Katara asks, shaking her head. We have to find Ang somehow, answers Zuko nursing his wound. We have to warn him. Again, things proceed as in the show. Sokka, Toph and Suki incapacitate the airships and Ang faces off against the Fire Lord. This time though, it is Azula he has to face. He is shocked to see her as the new Fire Lord but holds his ground. Please listen to me! Ang says. We don't have to fight! You have the power to end it here and stop what you're doing! I took my own father's life to rise to power, Azula answers, and yet you are trying to show me mercy? Don't make me laugh, I will end you right here, right now, and show you all that the only thing that matters is power. And so the battle rages, again Azula dominates, powered by both the comet and the sun, eventually forcing Ang to hide within a shell of rock. By some poetic justice, the very one who sealed this chakra and prevented him from entering the avatar state strikes him in just the right way to release it. 
and the tables suddenly turn in this battle. As Ang is about to make the final blow, urged by the power and minds of his past lives, Azula stares at him with wide-eyed fear. Out of the corner of his eye though, he sees Appa flying towards him. Zuko and Katara are almost here. This snaps him out of the Avatar state. He cannot take Azula's life after being so adamant that Katara not do the same to the man who did the same to her mother. He cannot take Azula's life in front of her own brother. Azula sees Zuko too, and this is when she finally snaps. How dare the Avatar show her mercy? How dare he prove the rubbish of love and kindness that her mother had shoved down Zuko's throat was a more powerful force than fear and power. And so, she strikes. But Aang is faster. He traps her and takes her bending, again showing her mercy. Azura cries, powerless. <laughs> She watches with tear-filled eyes as Team Avatar is reunited, hugging and showing love, while Azula has nothing, not firebending, not her throne, not power. Her whole world is utterly destroyed. The Fire Lord is defeated, and the world will now enter a new era of peace. So that's my rewrite of the ending of Avatar. Of course, this would have implications for the comics, but I think this would be a more compelling send-off for the show. It not only gives a more interesting story for our Fire Lord, but it also gives Katara a more complicated relationship with bloodbending. Let me know what you think about this. Do you like it? Do you think the original is better? Let's talk about it. Thanks for watching. I've been Ken Kwame, and I'll see you next time.